Hollows for Anna Wire Education Services and today we are continuing with our Crycos 101 series and specifically today we are talking about agents. Um, so I have worked in the Crycos sector for a fairly long time. I, uh, I hope I it is very very clear to most of industry from the post that I put up on LinkedIn I am not a fan of the vast majority of agents. Um, my reasoning for this is, is just my experience with agents is that they primarily are driven by financial motivations. It is the result of a poorly set up system. Um, so this video is potentially going to be a little bit contentious. I fully accept that. I am sure that, and I know that there are some very lovely agents out there who are very focused on providing good experiences and supporting students in coming to Australia. Um, however, I do believe in this case that there are an awful lot of them that do not provide the value that they get paid for. Um, so in general, what you can do is, is you can generally expect to pay agents anywhere from 20 to, and I kid you not, 50% of the qualification costs of the tuition fees um, for students. I am not a lawyer. I am purely providing my own personal perspective on this. If it was, uh, if you are running an RTO and you are paying more than 30% to your agents, I think you are wasting money. Um, and there is absolutely no way I would agree to pay an agent more than 30%. In fact, I'll be completely honest. I don't think that they deserve 20. Um, so <laughs> again, I know this is potentially controversial. Um, however, at the end of the day, the job of the agent is to provide a referral to the RTO. They should not be doing the enrollments. They are not providing any of the training and assessment. They very rarely provide any student support services. Um, so while, as far as I'm concerned, I consider them a necessary evil in our industry. Um, I have advocated on multiple occasions that it is an industry that should be regulated, as I also believe that um, consultants should be regulated as well. Um, I would be the first to put up my hand for that. Um, but if you are a quality provider and you are working with agents, I would be playing hardball. Okay. Now that does mean that you are going to miss out on particular markets. You are going to miss out on um, potentially growing your numbers as much as you would like. But my advice to RTOs is to always be very selective with the agents you are working with. Be very clear in your expectations with them because the standards in and around this are very, very clear. And to be honest, agents are one of the reasons why Crycos is such a high risk area. So register under the standards, and there is a specific standard, standard four, which relates to education agents. Um, it says education agents are an important part of the international education sector in Australia. Registered providers must ensure that their education agents act ethically, honestly, and in the best interest of overseas students and uphold the reputation of Australia's international education sector, of which I think most of the agents do not do a good job of this. Um, so as a registered provider, you have to do a couple of things. You have to have a written agreement with each education agent that you engage with, okay? That written agreement has to be maintained in two separate systems, okay? Because it is considered a third-party agreement. It is a body under the RTO standards that is acting to support marketing and recruitment in your organization. Um, so therefore it has to be registered as a third-party agreement in Asquinet, okay? It also has to be entered and maintained in the PRISM system as well. Okay, so you've got two systems that you have to report this agreement in, and both of those systems require you to have a written agreement with every single education agent that you engage with. Okay, you also have to ensure that the education agents that you um, you engage with have appropriate knowledge and understanding about the Australian International Training, uh, Australian International Education and Training Agents Code of Ethics. Okay, and there is like an online course for that. Um, it's relatively easy for agents to demonstrate that they have completed that course. Um, and most agents are very, very good about regularly undertaking that required training. You then have to ensure that education agents act honestly and in good faith. And you have to take immediate action, immediate corrective action or terminate a relationship if an agent is not complying with the national code. And you cannot accept overseas students from an educational agent 
if you know or suspect that the education agent is engaging in, un in unethical recruitment processes. Now, this is my, this is my, again, I'm saying out loud, I have a bias. It is a negative bias. Uh, it is based on personal experiences. Um, so here are some of the things that you need to be aware of that I have I have in, that I have seen over the years of working with agents. Agents lying to students about the requirement to attend classes. Agents lying to students about the requirement to do their assessments. Agents actively selling assessments to international students. Okay. Agents providing services of writing the students' assessments for them as a full on side business. Agents extorting students for fees. Agents threatening students in relationship to fees. Agents threatening RTOs in relationship to fees. Agents actively working against RTOs to move them from one RTO to another to get more money for themselves. Okay. Again, this is purely my, my experience with agents. I have had very few positive experiences with agents and that is what that is what taints my opinion of them okay i'm as i said i i have had a few experiences with good agents but the vast majority of them have been combative and it has been solely focused around i can sell you these international students and i think that that habit is disgusting i i hold no qualms about that um and if agents don't like me for it i don't care um this is why I don't run an international college anymore. So, um, so my advice to you, if you are working with agents and if you are working in the cry cost sector, you likely are working with agents is you need to have a very strong written agreement in place and you need to have a lot of monitoring mechanisms to ensure that students are being provided with the right information from day dot. Okay, things like agents cannot come up with their own marketing materials, they use your marketing materials, things like having lots of videos available online for students to engage with correct information about your courses before they enroll. Okay, um, surveys going out to your students in relationship to the service that they were provided the information that they were provided and whether or not the information has been consistent between the RTO and the agent okay so you can raise a survey and you can go you know were you provided with enough information prior to enrollment was there anything that you didn't know did you provide did you receive any conflicting information prior to enrollment all of these sorts of things once the students get on shore they're generally pretty open and honest about what they were told beforehand um, as i said there are certain agents that i know are still operating in industry that are selling students that are selling a service to their students of completing the student's work or selling them the assessments. Um, that is just something that you just constantly need to be aware of. There is a huge amount of plagiarism in the, probably more so in the cry cost sector um, of VET than there is in the general VET sector. Um, so it's something that you need to be aware of. It's a reason why a lot of providers, a lot of the good providers choose to create their own assessments or, um, will regularly update their assessments or will run a lot of the assessments um, in an in-class model where you can guarantee authenticity of the students because you're watching them engage and create the assessments in front of you. Um, so that's kind of how I recommend approaching that. If you are um, going to actually, if you do end up taking action, obviously you're going to rely on that written agreement. So within the written agreement, you should have very clearly outlining you as the registered providers responsibilities the requirements of the agent in representing you as the registered provider um, your process for how you will go about monitoring agent activities um, corrective actions that are going to be taken in the case that um, there is a potential grounds for termination and circumstances under which information may be shared with other bodies so in the circumstance for example that you receive a complaint about a, an agent um, from one of your students, you are provided with very clear evidence from the student that the agent is engaging in unethical conduct. Um, I put into my written agreements that that information will then be shared with um, 
state and territory agency. So I would be sharing that with ASQA first and foremost and saying, hey, heads up, we have found evidence of this. This is the action that we have taken to stop it, but we're reporting this agent that they are undertaking that particular information, okay? Um, I do think it is very, very important to have a very strong process in place for this. I believe that if you want to establish a reputation as a quality RTO, you need to be very choosy with the agents that you choose to work with. And I believe that you need to um, have a lot of supporting information. As I've said, my preference would always be for providers to have a lot of video information available. It's by far the easiest medium for students to understand. It's much more engaging than just having a written policy and procedure. And particularly for younger generation students that are coming through for millennials and for gen whatever we're coming up to now, um, having short, sharp videos, explaining your policies, explaining your courses, explaining why you're different from other providers and focusing on how you support students to have a really immersive experience in Australia um, is a much better way of going about growing your student numbers than just having agreements with a bunch of dodgy agents who are going to sell you a body um, and really not care about it any more than that. So again, I, I preface this all with this is my personal information. This is not representative of any body or anything like that. Um, this is purely based on my personal experience with agents within the vet sector. And it is my strong recommendation to any Crycos providers that anytime you are working with a third party, understand that you are working with somebody who is representing you and has an ability to impact on your reputation and an ability to um, get you into trouble with the regulator and who is representing the Australian international education industry as a whole. We have struggled to build a quality reputation um, in particular sectors because of the actions of RTOs, agents and students combined, but the financial factors driving um, agents' actions within the sector are really, really poorly managed. Um, so I would hope that that would be one thing that we will see change over a period of time. However, we haven't seen it change in the last 15 years. And if anything, um, the rates that agents are expecting to be paid purely for an enrollment um, are simply not viable for the vast majority of RTOs. If you are paying an agent 50%, I struggle to see how you can provide a quality course that is going to be compliant, that's going to provide the student with a good experience because you are giving all your profit away to somebody who is literally just getting the student into the country. And not that that's a small or not an easy task, but it's certainly not worth $5,000, you know, or $10,000, which is like, which is what you're going to be giving them if you're giving them 50% of the course fees for the first year. Um, so that is my personal advice. Again, I do realize that this was a very, very controversial episode, um, that it probably seems that I'm very biased against agents. I am very open and honest in my bias against agents. I don't like them. I don't like what they contribute to our sector. I recognize they're an important part of our sector. Um, however, it is always a buyer beware um, sort of a circumstance, very similar to dealing with consultants. Um, there are some really fantastic consultants. There are some really fantastic agents, but there is also a lot of consultants that are not qualified. There's a lot of agents that are really just seeking dollars and they do a lot to take away from the quality of our sector. So it's always a buyer beware situation. Please go in with your eyes open. Hopefully this video has helped you a little bit with that. I'm sure I'll probably get some thumbs down for this episode from agents out there. Don't really care. That's not who I'm here to work with. That's not who I'm here to support. I'm here to support you guys as the RTOs, um, trainers, vocational education, training practitioners. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, smash the like button, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you hit the notifications button so that you never miss an Wire episode. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, please whack them below. Um, we're always happy to receive feedback and it's the best way that you can actually help promote our channel um, if you do like all of this content. Thank you very much for listening to me. My name is Lauren Hollows for NOI Education Services.